It's official, Linkin Park are back and are releasing a brand new album from Zero on November 15th. Mike Shinoda, Brad Delson, Phoenix Farrell and Joe Hahn are joined by new members Emily Armstrong of Dead Sarah as co-vocalist and Colin Britton, the songwriter and producer for the likes of G Flip, Elenium and One OK Rock on the drums. New single, The Emptiness Machine, is available right now, the band's first new music in seven years. On the new album, Mike Shinoda says it was made with a deep appreciation for our new and long-time bandmates, our friends, our family and our fans. We are proud of what Linkin Park has become over the years and excited about the journey ahead. The band will kick off this new era with a series of headline shows including in Los Angeles, New York and at the O2 Arena in London. The band played a special event this evening, September 5th, in Los Angeles, where all the news was revealed. It was broadcast via live stream on the band's official website and also shown on big screens in New York's Times Square and at Shoreditch High Street Station in London. Opening with the emptiness machine, Shinoda greeted the crowd by simply saying, it's good to see you again. So how did we get here? Well, rumours about possible live shows have circulated online for some time now as the band continued to remain as popular as ever. In fact, when we caught up with Mike Shinoda for his recent rock sound icon issue, we discussed how their influence has been felt on the next generation of bands and how their audience has kept growing even in their absence. To be in, in 2023 seeing brand new teenage artists and bands show up and referencing and loving Linkin Park music is like such a blessing. Like we're, we would never guess that we could be in this position. And to be honest, like some of the, it's crazy to think that some of them will be in this position later. Like they'll grow up to be um, a band that somebody else references. So the, I think the chain, you know, that chain of influence and inspiration goes on. It's, we were influenced by bands. We will influence bands. Um, and it's a, that's a beautiful lineage. Um, separate from that, I mean, I, you know, we were, we were on the more like, I don't know, practical or like logical side of things. There's a, um, the end of the year is when everybody gets, you know, a lot of their data back. Um, besides you're like Spotify wrapped and stuff like that, like, like, like more, um, deep dive uh wrap ups for the year that you get from management or your label or your publisher and so on and they're like saying hey okay you know, like, here's how we did this year we're really happy with these things maybe we can like work on these other things later next year and there was like you know for a band that is like i guess technically technically inactive lincoln park has been on an upswing in the last two years that is like unbelievable we've i mean the the we have like I got, we got one, I think we got on one, um, one report for like just one DSP platform. We had gained like, like multiple tens of millions of new listeners. Wow. And like, that's mind blowing. These are people like, and I, I it, what they mean is like people that have never listened to Lincoln, like 30 million people who have never listened to Lincoln Park before found Lincoln Park this year. And all I can do is be grateful. Like that's the only, I don't, there's, there's, there's almost like nothing else I can say about that. It's just shocking. And, um, I can just, what, what do I say? It's just like, thank you. That's all. Although the band have not been fully active in recent years, there have been moments to celebrate, such as the release of the 20th anniversary reissue of their debut album, Hybrid Theory. Joe Hahn reflected around that release about why he thinks those classic songs still resonate with people today. We, we went into that record just trying to, you know, reach inside of ourselves and um, have this introspective look and present what's going on. And um, I think what ended up is uh, there's this energetic music came out that people could relate to, that people could really live vicariously through. I don't think the, the songs themselves provide answers, but, you know, some people it provides uh, uh, just like safety or or maybe even direction just like some kind of um, some kind of peace even though the music itself is not so peaceful sure. uh, I think <laughs> but I think that 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 feeling whatever it is has been pretty common with people throughout the years and you know I um, we didn't know that that would be the case when we wrote it 
it's just something that happened. We were just kids that uh, wanted to make music. A 20th anniversary edition of Meteora followed and came alongside previously unheard single Lost, which became a major hit on the US Billboard chart. Dave Farrell also reflected on the success of that particular song with us last year. I wish I knew how or why any of that worked, but I don't. But I do know, I do know that our fan base, for whatever reason, has always been insanely supportive of, of everything uh, we've done and everything we've tried. Um, and so I've, I have felt so fortunate, you know, throughout our career to have the type of fan base and the type of fans that we have, the type of people that we have um, kind of in the Linkin Park community. And I think this has been a project where for me, when I first kind of listened to that song again, I had forgotten about the song. I, you know, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, I remember this, you know, but at the same time I was getting to listen to it with fresh ears, having not heard it for 20 years and kind of almost not even thought about it for 20 years. So I was also almost like uh, caught by, not caught by surprise is not the exact way to say it, but a, a little bit of caught by surprise by Chester's voice and just kind of taking me back to that early place of like, I, oh yeah, like I love his voice. Like this, he's got an awesome, incredible, connection with what he's singing and there's so much power there and it was just almost like I was hearing him sing something fresh and new um, and I think I think or I was hoping that that would get, was going to be able to then go to the fans as well and for them to have that similar experience of even though it's 20 years old having something feel like you know a, a person or a singer that you really love you're getting to hear something new from them. So with this increasing interest in the band, it came as no surprise when Billboard reported earlier this summer that early discussions were in place for a possible reunion tour to take place in 2025. So there we are, 11 brand new songs arriving this November, a world tour about to kick off, and a brand new drummer and co-vocalist. This is the new era of Linkin Park. I've been James Wilson-Taylor, and this has been your Rock Sound News Update.